Hi, I'm Rita Thompson, one of the resident artists at Johnson Center for the Arts. Since I could hold a crane, I like that. I used to wait for my mother to take the calendar pages off the wall so I could take my little cranes and do a drawing. I, just, I was just drawn to it. In Boston Public Schools, we had art every day. We had cranes. Fourth grade, they took the cranes away and gave us watercolor. And then in high school, I was an art major, and um, I had a double period of art every day. And as many classes as I could cut, <laughs> I spent in the art room. When I left the crayons, it was watercolor. Watercolor and then uh, oil paints in high school. I worked in oil until acrylics were invented. I just liked the uh, vibrancy of the acrylic paint. I always painted anyway in my spare time, and uh, when I when I worked, I worked in graphic arts. I didn't paint much. I probably do one or two a year. That was about it. And I got laid off in two thousand nine, and it was like, oh, I couldn't find a job because graphic arts was dead. And I said, well, I guess I can go back to painting every day. Well, that's what I did, and here I am. I was having a show in Haverhill, and it was a series of um, three-decker houses, and they were all blue with white trim. These houses actually exist. And I was doing a Greek revival, looking at it from the front. It was 30 by 40, and large painting, a lot of perspective, and a lot of planning, and it took over six months to do. And by that time, it was like the painting owned me. I didn't own the painting. I sort of got tired of the tyranny of <laughs> perspective <laughs> and um, things that, the, the rules. I was very tired and I just wanted to have fun with paint. So when I finished that, the gallery show was held. I thought I'd just play around. And uh, the first, the first abstract I did was, I, I, 24 by 36, and it was just blues and whites, and it flowed from one plane to the other. And I call it liberation, because that's how I felt at the time. And since then, I've been painting abstracts, experimenting with color and texture, embedded media, and the possibilities are endless. Well, it's the color balance and form balance. I decide on what colors I want to use, and what size canvas, and just put the paint out there, I might trowel it on, I might mix it with water and drip it on, I might even take the tube and just squeeze it on and then come back with the twirl and move it around. I don't want to tell all my secrets, <laughs> but um, it, it moves, it, it grows, it's organic, it's like a living thing. And um, if it doesn't work, you can always correct it. You can turn it around. When I'm painting, Sometimes I'm really not conscious of what I'm doing. As I say, you get, you get lost in it. We continually learn. Well, I would say by looking at other people's work and just looking at the world around you, you might see something that you'll say, well, I'd like to paint something like that. Well, I know when I get back to realism, there'll be a lot of things, more blue houses and brick blocks that I want to paint. If I didn't, I don't know what I'd do. In fact, I'm, prob I'm probably obsessed with it, which may or may not be a good thing. <laughs>